Good afternoon from Barrow, Alaska. We just arrived and you probably have been watching us get up here, but now we're actually going to go have some fun. We've got to get checked in and then we're going to go play. We're at the literally the top of the world, the northernmost city in the United States and right over there is the Arctic Ocean. So we're going to head on over to our hotel, aptly named Top of the World Hotel, and go get checked in. I welcome you that came in. Thank you. How do you pronounce the native village name? Utkavik. Utkavik? Yeah. Thank you. Excited? Extremely excited. We just had an amazing conversation with Reba, the manager here. She told us a little bit of information about the polar bears, and we kind of knew this already, but they are the only bear out there that will actively hunt a human, and they are actually you know, not uncommon to be walking around town and on the beach. So we're gonna have to keep our eyes out. That's a really good deal. What is it? It's the yo-yos made with the polar bear. Uh, fur and beaded. Oh wow! It's a yo-yo. Yeah. Have you seen them in use before at activities or? I never have. I've only seen them on display. But oh, wow. They're usually really expensive. For you to like. Wow, this is cool. Going up. <laughs> this is amazing. What floor, baby? We're on the third floor. Nice. Penthouse suite. Top of the world, literally. We asked for a room with a uh, view of the water, so this should be pretty cool. Wow, it's got a kitchen. Well, that's a nice bathroom. Really nice. This is not your average village hotel. No. Let me just tell you from extensive experience. <laughs> this is really nice. Oh my God, look at this. See, this is what I was talking about yesterday, that I'm alive. Okay guys, we are out and gonna go get a bite to eat. Our first stop is gonna be, uh, I believe it's called Northern Lights Restaurant. So let's go check it out. So our first recommendation, if you ever come up here, would be to wear your boots. Extra Tufts are my preferred choice. And Beck's wearing some muck boots. Also wanted to share with you that it is about 35 degrees right now. You saw a little bit of snow as we were coming in. And also, the sun is setting at around 11.30, I think, and coming up somewhere in the five o'clock hour. Just started setting again, though. I think there's snow coming on us. Yeah. The sun up here does not set from May 10th to August 2nd, according to the book. But if you're curious about the Northern Lights, you definitely need to come up here when it gets dark. But at the same time, we are so far north that we're actually needing to look south to see the Northern Lights. I think it's important to uh, talk a little bit about what it's like to live in the villages. You have to think about how much money people pay to get stuff here. And then even if it breaks down, they keep it because maybe it has parts on it that they will need someday. Or somebody else will need. Or somebody else. And nothing goes back out of the villages. At some point, it's kind of, uh, it's nostalgic for me, you know, like it almost feels like a coming home kind of thing because it's really special to come out here. This is a privilege. When you're in villages like this, you are practically out of the United States. The culture is so rich and so different from what anybody could ever imagine in the lower 48 or even modern parts of Alaska that you might as well just be in a foreign country. And to us, that's a good thing. In the off chance that we do see a polar bear while we're out and about, pretty much our first defense is gonna to be to run like hell to the nearest vehicle or building and uh, just get to safety. But the good thing here, most people leave their vehicles and houses unlocked. The Northern Lights, and it looks like it's three kind of uh, well-insulated 
trailers. Yeah, triple wide. Who wants some sushi? As one would expect when you're in this remote of a location, you can pay 18 to 20 dollars for a bowl of soup. A little update. I have a few friends up here uh, from my years of working with native corporations and uh, reached out to someone oh last week I guess uh, that I know lives up here and let him know that we were coming and uh, he said he would give us a tour uh, a locals tour of Barrow when we got here and then yesterday he emailed and told me that there's a health fair going on in town uh, at the elementary school and we thought it'd be really fun to go over there. It turns out that one of the health aides that I know is actually working one of the booths there. So we'll get to stop in and see him. And then we're gonna go on a tour, a driving tour with Glenn. So this should be a really cool afternoon. I am so excited because I see these people in Anchorage all the time, but now we'll see them where they live. So it should be fun. So today we got chicken fried rice and Mongolian beef. Um, each plate is $20. It does look really good though. Mm -hmm. Okay, that lunch was pretty good. Now we call the taxi and are gonna head down to the elementary school for the health fair. Well, this windshield has a few cracks. A short $6 cab ride brings us to the elementary school. We're at the health fair at the elementary school and got to stop in and visit my friends that work up here. And there's a giant colon in the background and uh, it's a really nice health fair big turnout. It's uh, in the gym. There's a lot of tables and booths here and lots of little people running around. It's really fun. We found a great place to point something out to you guys. You'll notice uh, all of the buildings here are up on pylons because we are on the tundra and the permafrost freezes and thaws so the buildings flex. But you'll notice that there's actually chain link fencing underneath there as well and the reason being is that wildlife particularly polar bear and caribou crawl underneath the buildings and then uh, they can surprise people. A cool little tidbit for you. The Russians came up twice, I think. I don't think they ever got ashore. Uh, Kashavarov uh, in 1825 or 1826. Mm -hmm. And then I think there might have been one other ship that came up in the 1840s. So this is the old weather station. They moved out several years ago. And uh, scattered all around the periphery here, are houses that uh, uh, the feds used to live in. The bowhead whales, once they're dead they're, and they're not respirating, the heat inside their body doesn't dissipate because of the foot of blubber encasing them, and they start cooking themselves. So you want to start the butchering process as quickly as you can, right? Uh, and that's why there's always concern about, uh, you know, running seismic lines that might might make the uh, whales go further out or something mm -hmm. uh, because of that specific impact. Uh, in the spring whaling, uh, when they're, when the ice, the near shore ice is you know, grounded and attached to the beach, and the whaling crews cut trail over that till they get to the edge, to the lead where there's open water, and on the other side there's floating ice, and that's where they're whaling in that near shore lead they're always on the, the stable ice. But they have to be able to leave their camp with their gear and people within like two minutes. Sometimes that's as much warning as you have. You've heard the stories of the ice cracking off and you know six people on snow machines will head towards the crack, five of them will have to veer off and not do anything and one might make it over, mm. right? Uh, or in the other direction, they're at a lead and all of a sudden the ice their facing starts moving and within two minutes it come crash and destroy the camp. So guys, this tour that we're getting from uh, Glen is so amazing. We're here at this archeological site and it's right on the shores of the Arctic Ocean here. These houses were entirely wood. You know, they were roof, walls, floor. It was all hand adds driftwood. Where did they get the wood? Just driftwood that washed up on the beaches? Yeah, I think maybe the biggest house plank, the one that had the hole in the floor because you entered the house through a tunnel that got... The really? Deep, yeah, the deepest part of the tunnel was right under the, the front of the house uh -huh. and there was a hole, the katuk, in the floor. 
And I think those planks, which had to be much more sturdy, they might have uh, traded. About how old is this dwelling? Well, I, you know, roughly I know what's what here, but the, the, the deepest part of the stratigraphy is probably from around AD 400 or, you know, a couple hundred years more recent than that. There's all kinds of bones in this uh, material here. Warning, no digging. $250,000 fines. There hasn't been ice around in the summer very much. So really? This is unusual because this is, this. there was ice here for most of the summer, then there wasn't for a few weeks, then it's back again. But basically, you know, it's been like you'd go 400 miles and not reach the ice. Wow. Uh, there are still people from Scotland and Japan, because I've talked to them, that come to study this thing. Uh, it's these, you know, concrete, uh, basically containers uh, that are built and they have natural gas that will come up inside them and you can put anything except lead and maybe one other thing plus of course you don't want to put a 55 gallon drum that's sealed and has gas vapor in it right that's why there's two tones of roof they blew the roof off once oh, no. <laughs> with one one drum wow right uh, but other than that uh, when when they're done if there was like a desk and the desk had a cardboard box on it among the trash, after this thing is done, you light it off with natural gas, almost immediately you turn off the gas and it's self-consuming. The only thing that comes out of the stack is carbon dioxide and water vapor. And it's just pure ash that is non-toxic left inside. When it cools down, you can go in and the desk is still there and the box is still there. You go like this and it all collapses into a pile of ash. It's so cool. We have something really cool to show you here. If you're a football fan, you're going to find this really interesting. The northernmost football field in the United States and possibly the world because Americans are pretty much the only ones that play football. I've heard rumor that they say it's really nice to play on because it kind of has some give to it. Yeah. Our Seward High School team comes up here and plays football. So that's like a thousand mile journey high school students make just to play other high school teams. So it's a really fascinating aspect of sports in Alaska. We are back at the hotel room and we're both starting to run out of gas. Uh, last night was kind of late and then an early morning. Yeah, we're running out of gas, so we're going to take a nap. So now I'm going to set the camera here in the window and see if I can get a time lapse of this sea ice moving along the coast. are going to what may very well be the northernmost Mexican restaurant in the United States. Or maybe even the world. Maybe. You never know. You never know. We're not going to make the claim, nope. but we're pretty far up here. Yes. So we're going to get Mexican food for dinner to take back to the hotel room. And they also have fresh baked goods here too. Maybe we'll get something for <laughs> dessert. Cruises and Liliana's. Okay, it's about five to seven minutes for our dinner to be ready. And we decided to walk over here to the, gosh, is it the Whalebone Monument or Whalebone Memorial? Well, I'll just show you. So these are whale bones and that's one of the native boats that are uh, a lot of times uh, seal skin boats. Looks like this man's got a nicer camera than me. What do you think? I feel like I should be reporting about the whales that are trapped in the ice. Three gray whales are now trapped in walls of ice six inches thick. Are you hungry for dinner? Famished. Okay. Well guys, we're gonna call it a wrap for the day. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and most importantly, enjoy the ride. We'll see you tomorrow.